and I think it's going to be very good. Um, go to Breeze Rive, Rise and Thrive, the page, it's Tom's page, and uh, check out the link, and if it interests you, maybe sign up. Um, so yeah. Here, I think we got him. Let's see. Did it work? Did it work? Oh? Is this happening? Can you hear this me? Uh, what's going on? Um, Danny Nucci, everybody. Hello, hello. Thank you for being with me, Danny. I was just uh, kind of saying hi to the people joining and mentioning the workshop and how this is sort of in anticipation for... Uh... Hi, Paula. Hi, Paula. Uh, <laughs> for the workshop is happening in February. And, um, you know, Tom and I are kind of going around, floating around, talking to people that we, uh, that we enjoy. And, um, you know, you were, uh, you're unfortunately one of mine. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's kind of it happens that way sometimes, doesn't it's it? It's just, it's kind of, I couldn't get around it. So here we are. Uh, we'll make it quick. I know we, not, neither of us want to be here. So, I'm happy um, to be here. No, no, I know. I, I'm very I happy that I, you. I never leave my house. Like, I never talk to anybody. I've literally well, been like hiding out for a year. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, it's been more than that, but we'll go with a year. Um, <laughs> So no, so so the workshop to get into it a little bit, the workshop has to do with story and uh, character, and it's it's sort of an introduction to acting, or for those who are, you know, maybe creative or interested in acting or interested in story, and um, so Tom and I are kind of centering these conversations around around that kind of thing. Did you see the one with Tom and I? I did not. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's on. It's on his page. Should Breeze, I go rise, watch and it drive. Now? Yeah, go watch it right now. It's 47 it minutes. Out. Yeah, I'll wait here. Um, but uh, so, no, I just I, I wanted to I wanted to kind of start it off with with a, a sort of broad question and you can take it how you will. But if we're talking about story, what does story mean to you in, ter in the sense of what we do or what is wh when you what are the some of the first things that come to mind when you think of, when of, you story? Think of story? Well, yeah. you know, just from an acting standpoint, that's what I'm here to serve. Right. Whatever character I create, whatever role I'm playing, whatever part I have in it is to serve the story. So, you know, in terms of my participation, I have to kind of have an idea of what story we're telling or what story the writer is telling, what story the filmmaker wants to tell. Like, let's say it's a, you know, it's mostly a visual story. I still yeah. have to have a sense of that to figure out which part I'm contributing. Because that's essentially what we do, right? We're contributing to the story. Right. Nobody just wants to see some dude perform and not have any context. That sounds awful. Or, or a gal or a non-binary person. You don't want to just sit there and have somebody, you know, performing with no story and no idea why. 100%. I guess it's, it's yeah, it's, I mean, it's the glue that holds it all together. And so with that, are there any types of stories that are your favorite to be a part of? Or are there any that are most important to you? Good ones, Davey. I like good ones. That's one of my, but yeah. my favorites are, are the ones that are... Uh, Good ones, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, are, are you saying is there a specific genre? No, you know, I'm a, as you know this, I love to read. And so I read a pretty wide spectrum of different fiction. You know, okay. some of some of it's science fiction, some of it, you know, uh, literature, some of it's spy novels. Um, and so it, it, it's just what constitutes a good story is not necessarily the genre. It's, it's the feeling it invokes and it's whether it keeps me engaged. You know, yeah. I, I, like I... Like I love thrillers because I want to know what happens. I love bad. I hate bad thrillers. Yeah. Because I know what's gonna happen. Right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I love things that keep me on my feet and uh, keep me from guessing. Sure. Do you think um, when you're a part of a story as an actor, let's say, do, would you say you have a, a certain process for how to how to feel like you're a part of that story? Is there a go-to process, or is it sort of 
situational to the story to the character what what do you what in your experience what, what do you notice the, the complicated answer is both okay right in essence um think of it like a tennis player a tennis player knows exactly comfortable in their backhand cap, cap comfortable in their forehand they know their serve so whatever tennis match they're playing they have sort of a set uh set of skills that they're mm -hmm. going to bring to it but once you get an opponent you don't know do they have a great serve are they great on the forehand are they great on their backhand do they move quickly it all depends on what you're dealing with so it's both in essence i start with sort of a framework of how to approach a role but each role calls for different things. Right. Have you, um, this, this was something that, that Tom and I touched on a little bit. Have you been in, and, and I don't, I actually don't even know if I've, if we've talked about this fully, but I've been in situations. It's hard to think we haven't. We, we probably, yeah, yeah. So it's. <laughs> we chopped it up about this a few times, David. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Every, every which way that we could possibly. But. I, you know, one of my favorite, I feel like one of my favorite things that's sort of um, a more vulnerable place to be in terms of um, approaching a story or approaching a character is that notion of not necessarily knowing how to do it fully. Or this idea of feeling, you know, I have an idea of what this character is, I have a take on it, I, I know the story, I know the character's place in the story. How do I best translate this? And sometimes I, the way that Tom and I were talking about it is like being on that ledge and just taking that jump. And then in, in a lot of cases, when you do that, you end up finding this new realm within yourself or you end up finding this, this extra gear that you kind of kick into. And you might not have much experience or necessarily know what you're doing, but it's, there's, I, I feel like there's something to that, right? I mean, like, I, I've, I just, I know in my, in my experience, and, and obviously you have twice as much, if not three times as much, because you're, you're, 300, you're 300 years old. That's right. Um, so, uh, but d it, does that make sense? Do you know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're saying. And yeah, yeah. it's true. I mean, you know, part of the, the difficult thing about being an actor is you don't really know till you've done it. Yeah. Like you could be completely prepared and get on a set or get on stage or be in scene in a class. And you don't know what the other actor is going to do. You don't know what, you know, whether you had too much to eat or whether you're off today or whether you've gotten some news and you've got to, it's going to inform what you do. So there's never any kind of set thing that you can absolutely 100% rely on. And there's mm -hmm. always this feeling of wanting to do a good job. Yeah. And if you're completely focused on wanting to do a good job, then that's, you know, it, you're no longer doing the scene. You're trying to get to this sort of idea of doing a good job. So the, 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 the short answer is as long as you kind of have a, a way forward, like, all right, I got this, I got yeah. this, I know yeah. these lines, right. I think I know what's happening in this scene, whatever allows you, it's like a dumb metaphor was, as long as you have the parachute, you can jump. Don't jump mm -hmm. without the parachute. Sure. <laughs> right, have checked that it opened, but what's going to happen once you jump is, you know, we'll see, the winds will take you, how long you'll go, how quickly yeah, yeah, the yeah. shoot will open. All that stuff, like a little a metaphor guy today. Sorry, David. No, you, no, I like, you, I love it. I love you, it. You, you get the point that that even though what one desires is certainty, it sort of takes the fun out of it. Mm -hmm. The certainty should come from: Did I prepare as best I could to start? Sure. So if you're sure. like in class, right? Yeah. Like just in class, the whole point of class is to fall on your ass. Right. <laughs> Right. right. The whole point of class is to have your teacher or somebody go, OK, that was good. Let's make some adjustments. Here's where you could have done better. Right. If, yeah. you, if you're in class and the only thing you're doing is that was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. You're not learning anything. Yeah. So the idea is to ha have enough to give it a whirl. Yeah. You know, sometimes like I'll get an appointment. Right. And I think, OK, well, if I don't know these lines at all and I have no idea what this character is, there's no point in me going to the appointment. Hmm. So if I can push it an hour, yeah. at least get a sense, have a better sense of the dialogue, or if I can push it an hour and get a better sense of the character, or if I can skim the script that's available yeah. and kind of go, okay, oh, I get it. Okay, so my character stands here in the story. Okay, he serves this part of the story. Then I feel able to kind of go, all right, I'll see what happens. Sure. Well, that's interesting because I was, I, was, I was wondering if, if – um, over time have things changed for you in terms of your process to approach a character 
and you kind of yeah. were you were just touching on that like have you seen an evolution have you are are there go to's that you've stuck to that are that are still the age old thing that you should do have you i mean how much has that has that changed for you over time? I think both are true. A lot of it has changed. I mean, the thing that has changed and it, it can only I think can only come from experience is when you've done a lot of work and your own standard of it and the response you've gotten seems pretty consistent. Like it's not bad. It yeah. does something to the next time you do it. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and I I can't say that you know I feel the same way as I did when I was new starting out for the first time you know as a 14 year old kid that's not right. true right um but in terms of the things that that like, i learned in school that i still in acting school that i still hold on to is this idea to take the attention off of myself just in whatever i can do to take the attention off myself whether it be characters trying to do anything but take the attention off of me. Yeah, yeah. Just don't worry about me. I'm fine. Let's right. work, let's put the attention somewhere else. That's always served. And whenever yeah. I feel like I'm dying or I'm in trouble, right? That's what right. I go to. Like sometimes you're in a scene, you're like, I suck. No, I really suck. Well, that line was awful. Why did you say it that way? It's not the way you rehearsed. Meanwhile, you're in the middle of friggin' scene. Yep. Yep, right? yep, yep. And so when that happens and it starts getting noisy and my eyes are around here and I'm back here watching all of this go on when I really yeah. want to be engaged in the scene. Yeah. Just to kind of not just to get the attention off myself and then it sort of takes off. Sure. Is that more of an answer than you would want? looking for it that was perfect Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I start the process. Um, reading the script is always great, but if you're doing like television, where as you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you get a scene, you have no idea yeah. who these people are, you have no idea what's going on, right? Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. first part is try to get an understanding of of what it is. It doesn't have to be a right understanding. It doesn't right. have to be what the writers intended. It just has to be something that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe he's saying this because of this. Oh, maybe when she says that, it means that. Having it make some sort of sense. So yeah. that I can sort of approach it. So I kind of, that's kind of where I start. No, no, I think that's great. And I, I agree with that, too. And, and going to your point with television, too, you know, there's, there's also all those drafts that, that we go through, right? So, like, things are constantly changing, and it's kind of this, you have to find this neutral position where, like you said, it makes sense to you. Like, for me, I always felt like I, I it, it was the later drafts, in, you know, in my mind that, that really end up focusing in on what, what we're actually trying to tell. You're you know? brilliant at this. Let's not kid yeah. ourselves. Your ability oh. to look at a scene and have it make absolutely no sense why your character says or does something. And then you making it believable. And I go, baby, how did you make that work? I'm like, ah, I don't know. I just made up that this was this. I made up that this was this. I made up that this was this. I go, but I don't think that's what it is. I, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> You know, but to your point, sudden, it's, it's really believable. You're like, wow. Right. But it's exactly what you're saying. It's 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 whatever makes sense to me. It's, you, it's, yeah. 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 So has there been um, and, you know, we can wait. We can wait while you think about this because you've been in a million things. Um, a favorite story you've been a part of. 
Um, a favorite story. A favorite story. story. Yeah, um, going, back, going back to that notion of story, all the things that you've been a part of job-wise, experience-wise. Script-wise, that were great stories. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I thought the boat was a great story. You know, when I, when I, um, Titanic, when I, he means Titanic. When I read it, yeah. when I read it, and I read it in the coffee shop downstairs at the Four Seasons Hotel, I was shooting a movie in Toronto. Okay. And, uh, and I just sat there for, I don't know, it was a two and a half hour, I mean, it was a long script. I was reading it slowly. And I closed that and I went, oh my God, this is great. I was completely engaged. Usually I don't like reading scripts. Hmm. About page three, I'm going, oh, I got to persevere and deal with this. Can I just read the dialogue? Yeah. I don't want to read the other stuff. Yeah. By the way, the other stuff's the most important stuff. Sure. But I was, I was you know, but I was completely engaged in reading it. And then just, it, I think it's a really great story. I think it's really sweet. I think it's well flushed out. Yeah. Um, and and it did just, all right. It did yeah, all right. And also, I think, you know, to, 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 to look at it from, Another perspective is to have been part of that story, because as a lot of people that are fans of the a film will tell you, they know that it was supposed to be the biggest film disaster ever made while we were shooting it. It was supposed to be, it was completely over budget. You know, it took way too long and people would, that's so funny, Terry Polo would point out, <laughs> she absolutely would point out that I was in Titanic. Um, <laughs> But, you know, just being part of something that was supposed to be a huge de- disaster and then became a, a film that people really, you know, loved and has endured is just a, it's just great to be a part of. So that's that's an interesting uh, thing to bring up. So if 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 that was the preconceived notion going into shooting, how did that affect you as an actor to be a part of that? You know, did, well, it, was, did you... it wasn't our business. We were just right. dealing with, you know, we were just dealing with God, this is taking long. Yeah. You know, I've been here for four days. I've done nothing. I've yeah. been called to set for a week. I've done nothing. How long is this taking? You're just going, wow. I hope yeah. Jim knows what he's doing. Sure. Yeah. That's so interesting. How long was the script? You mentioned reading the script in the, in the hotel. I don't How... know. It must have been 130 pages, 140 yeah. pages. It was long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Titanic fans will probably know better than me, but it, it was a long script. Either right. that or it just took me forever to read. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's... And how long was the shoot? That? eight months eight months yeah man I, I you know i still haven't uh so far been on a shoot that long is do you, is there is it a certain amount of stamina is it is that a marathon at a, at a certain point in terms of keeping a character going in terms of i was staying very, in that baby i was very lucky why because for me when it comes to an accent yeah or, or a limp or right. a physical thing or, you know, some kind of mental issue or some kind of speech impediment, it helps me to just stay in it. I'm not in character, but I'm doing the impediment. I'm doing the accent. I'm doing the physical thing. If I have a limp, let's say my character has a limp, I'll just limp while I'm at work. Yeah. I'm not going to go out of it. Yeah. It just helps me stay in it. So with this film, I was lucky that the minute I crossed the border into Mexico where we shot, I spoke like an Italian person. And Leo would make fun of me. He's like, hey, it's me, Mario. <laughs> wow, that's so wild. And so the entire time I had people that thought, like, um, Yoan Grufford, I saw years later, he goes, dude, I literally thought you were Italian. Yeah. Because he'd never heard me speak without an accent. That so is so wild. To, the reason I share that is because that helped me stay engaged. It just helped yeah. me stay engaged. Sure. Yeah, no, so that that's... So yeah, I mean that's a, that's a fantastic choice in terms of your favorite story, and I, I you know I, don't, I know a lot of people obviously know that one. So so I'll I'll ask one more question, one more question, one more kind of broad question, going back to what these workshops that Tom and I want to do um, are are really about. Which, By the way, which goes... I'm so excited for you guys and whoever joins it. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're gonna we're you know we're trying it, man. We're gonna see. Hopefully, you know, the, could not think of a better idea. The yeah, two of, especially the two of you. Yeah, well, thank he's you very so much. Like, he's so like he has such a process. And, yeah. And you're just so passionate about it. And the combination yeah. of you two is exciting. Well, thank you. I mean, it's it's you know, he and I have been talking, I would say, since 2020 about all sorts of things creative. And we've we've floated into this realm now. And I think it it, it oddly makes sense. So 
we'll see we'll see you know but if we if if the you know if everything goes the way we we think it can go we'll we'll definitely do more of these in the future as well and oh, um you know so we're gonna keep it going and we'll, we'll just see what this turns into but um so going on to stories yes sir. This, do you think stories are um a natural or even maybe primal or inherent thing to humans yes or no and why yeah i think they're necessary i think without story we i don't think we would evolve mm. i think part of part of how we evolve is by stories and i think stories have been around forever you know that's it, it's sort of one of the things that keeps us going that keeps it's part of the the human experience david without it there's it sort of lessens whether you know look at most of everything that we do is based around story everything yeah. of value that we do is based around story including if you're a sports fan you want to see how the story plays out even though right. it's live you want to see how the story plays out why are people tuning in to sport sporting events you want to see what the outcome you want to see the end of the story why are, are sporting events where a lot is at stake or we want to see them break we want to see how the story plays itself out you know, and part of being a parent is sharing the stories, creating stories with your children, you know, yeah. looking back at the stories. Oh, you know, even looking at a photo album as simple right. as like, you know, looking at your photo album or having stuff pop up, you know, summer yeah. 2017, you know, yeah. it's, it tells you a story. Yeah. It's yeah. Finding kind of everything. No, 100, but finding your own mythology, right? You know, it's, it's that idea of, of we're all living our own stories. That's a really good point to bring up with sports, though. I like that. That's an interesting angle for sure, because that is every game's a story, right? I mean, every team's a story. Or know, even it, like, you know, like you like MMA. You right. Know, there's a story. That you have two stories walking into the ring. Right. And you want to see you want to see the end of that story of those two, you know, those 100 percent. Yeah. So it's it, it, it's everywhere. And it's it's vital. I think. I mean, I, I don't I don't want to live without stories, honestly. 100 percent i think that's what we that's why that's why we're the way we are unfortunately or fortunately you know um well dude thank you so much for doing this with me i really appreciate it uh i love you and love you. Um, you're the best kid you know you're best. the you, you're Congrats the best this, by the way thank you no nucci is the best and and yeah guys if you want to go to tom's page breeze rise and thrive it's a it's an instagram account the link is there to, if you want to be a part of the workshops. It's February 8th, 15th, and 22nd, uh, three parts. Or you can do one of those sessions. If You can do all three or you can do one. So it's all up to you. All the information is on Tom's page. And uh, Nucci, thank you so much, man. Bye, DJ. All right, bye-bye. Bye, buddy.